I thought I'd try something different with the old uh, YouTube videos since we're in between storms in the UK at the moment uh, we had one last night and there's one due tomorrow currently there's a bit of a lull but the weather's still not great so I thought no portable for me so um, the other side of the radio hobby is uh, building stuff so I wanted to show you a couple of little little things I've been tinkering with um, the first one is this um, and it was featured in Sprat magazine which is the magazine of the GQRP club uh, and it came out in I think it was issue 35 which was the summer of 1983 and uh, it's just a little uh, very simple CW transmitter <laughs> which is built ugly style as you can see so this is the schematic um, by a chap called George Burt, GM3 OXX. Um, very simple, it's very chirpy, it's not a very good transmitter, but it was fun to build. So, soldered a bit of copper board together at a right angle, a um, bit of drag soldering to make the joint. It's actually quite strong. Um, and then schematic onto here so all the components are generally up it's like dead bug style because um, all the components are upside down and the legs are pointing upwards and then you just kind of solder it together in a very uh, almost random sort of way but yeah great fun to build um, and it works I can't do CW. Actually, one of my other projects was a. Um, I've built a Kia with a, uh, a little microcontroller and a uh, ESP32 microcontroller. So I wrote some software for that and I, I can bang out more. So I've tested it on um, the CW Beacon network and it's very low power. It's about 200 milliwatts, but yeah, quite fun. So the latest thing I've been working on is I'm quite into Whisper, um, kind of enjoyable. So I found, again from Sprat magazine, actually in a book, uh, the GQRP scrapbook, and in here is, well it's pointless finding the page, I've got it printed out. <laughs> In here's this schematic. So again, pretty simple. Um, an audio feed comes in from your PC, which is running Whisper, WSJTX, um, into a 602 mixer chip. Now I've used the 614 because the 602 is the same chip effectively. Um, and then there's a little crystal oscillator down here, but I didn't want to use a crystal oscillator. One, because I didn't have a... Uh, 7.04 megahertz crystal the, only, the closest I've got was 7.01 megahertz and I think I'd struggle to pull that far enough um, with a capacitor so I decided to get rid of the whole crystal oscillator and replace it with an SI5351 which is one of those so it's a microcontroller that uses I squared C and it's got three channels and you can uh, you can kick out well a square wave basically um, but it'll go quite high what's the up to 160 megahertz so seven seven megs isn't a problem for it so instead of the crystal oscillator I've used use one of these um, and the way I've built it this time is a bit more uh, a bit more robust than the dead bug upside down style so piece of copper board and I've got these pads from uh, qrpme.com um, and they're brilliant they're, 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 so the way you use them is if you find yeah so the way you use these um, these pads they just break off use a pair of pliers so they'll just snap off like that 
and then you get them down to individual squares. What I tend to do, or what, not what I tend to do, what I do do, is pick them up, give them a little dab of super glue, and then press them down where you want them. Being careful not to glue your fingers, which I've done several times. <laughs> So yeah, then you, I mean, that's isolated them from the ground, so you can use that as your joining points for the components. So it's a more robust way of doing things. It makes a bit of a neater circuit. Um, and also, it's quite handy, in the same kit from uh, qrpme.com, as you get these, again, they break off for soldering ICs to. So in this case, the 614. Um, I actually put a socket in there, just bend the pins out, solder it, and uh, away you go. So I've used, this is the <laughs> work in progress, I've used a tobacco tin. Um, built most of the circuit on a, a piece of copper board using the pads, um, and then some of it from the audio in was soldered directly onto the... Onto the um, onto the tin which takes solder really well actually you need you need to you need to get the iron quite hot but it's uh, yeah not a problem to solder that so I've got a BNC output for the antenna uh, DC in which is currently not used um, and a, uh, a phono 3.5 mil jack input so and then this is where it's work in progress. This is the input for the 7 megahertz oscillator. And here's one I made earlier. Ignore this one. So it's a, an ESP01, it's the 8266, but this is the zero, it's one of the first boards that came out and it was just meant as a sort of Wi-Fi module for your projects but it turns out you can program the chip as well um, so you can write Arduino code C basically and to write the firmware for that so using I squared C this is controlling the 5351 um, which is giving me 7.0385 megahertz I think it was um, which is then mixed with the 1.5 kilohertz from the audio and I should get whisper out of it just realised for the whole of that introduction you probably heard the fan heater in the background but uh, <laughs> never mind hopefully it wasn't too loud so what I'm going to do here I've got these things are quite good uh, little DC jack plugs and sockets um, with screw terminals on them so they're easy for just bodging stuff together so I'm just going to, um, red to black, that's a good idea, isn't it? So I'm going to solder these together, because they share a power supply at the moment. One downside is this takes 13.8 volts, which I'm pulling off my radio power supply. This is 3.3 volts, so it gets stepped down to 5 volts with this chip, and then 3.3 volts with this chip. Um... The downside is that's sinking a lot of voltage so it gets very hot so I don't like running it for very long but it's uh, it's not the final uh, setup it's just for testing so we'll just solder these together Yeah, nice and secure. So um, what I'm using for the power supply is this thing, uh, which I got off, where did I get it from? eBay. 
oh, a couple of years ago now um, it will take up to 50 volts in and it will give you 5 amps variable voltage and current limiting so um, yeah so it's a cracking little thing uh, it doesn't take up as much space as a proper power supply as well Oh, one thing to note here is the where are they? I've got a pack of them somewhere. Heatsink. One of the transistors, the first transistor I used for the final power amplifier, was uh, seemed to be dead on arrival. Um, yeah, there's a voltage divider here, which is biasing the final PA. And when I measured it, it says it should have half a volt. And when I first measured it, I was getting, you know, the full uh, supply voltage there. Which I thought, that doesn't make any sense. So I desoldered the uh, the resistors, tested them. You know, the values were correct. So it still not making any sense. Tested the capacitor in case that had some kind of dead short. No, the capacitor was fine. Um, and then I tested, I tested this with my component tester which is uh, another eBay special. I think it was about eight quid or something. It was, uh, these, these things are brilliant. And I tested this, uh, this NPN. I'll show you. Oh look, it's a 126 kilo ohm resistor. Hopefully you can see that. So yeah, clearly that's a. Uh, it was duff. Uh, you you don't. Know, I made this up. It's a little rig with the zero in insertion force socket there. You can uh, test components with. Um, yeah, and I noticed, especially when I wasn't running a dummy load. <laughs> So, which you shouldn't do with the transmitter. They're just open, open circuit, and the uh, this transistor got very hot very quickly, um, and it will get warm anyway. So I've got these little um, heat sinks. So you just prise them open with a screwdriver and and uh, sort of slot them over, and they make a nice tight, tight fit. Sink a bit of heat. Let's rig this up. Um, this is the the ground pin yes it is so this the circuit board the the, the tin is ground it's earthed so um, a couple of points where the PCB is soldered to the tin um, and all these sockets are grounded to the tin um, then I've got an output here which is a an inductor I was just I was playing around to see if it changed the shape of the waveform in a previous this wasn't built specifically for this so I'm just repurposing it for testing um, and then I'll give that to the input strangely because I thought this would just be pure AC out it's the 7 megahertz signal but I couldn't get this chip it just wasn't functioning um, on the on the output I was getting the 1.5 kilohertz audio um, but it didn't seem to be mixing it with the 7 meg and what fixed it was a, a blocking capacitor it's just a 10, 10 nanofarad um, without that capacitor it will not work so there we go Yeah, 115 uh, milliamps. Most of that is from this controller and probably the SI5351. So I suppose uh, I'll show you on the scope what it's doing. Mm. 
this here is a uh, it's an old old function generator I was given oh ages ago and uh, I thought it'd be perfect because I was having some issues with the audio coming out of my Windows tablet so I thought well I don't I don't need the actual whisper signal for testing I can just use one and a half kilohertz uh, sine wave so uh, the function generator is coming quite useful for this so that's just going to this BNC socket which is the output and then we can link it up to the jack plug so ground the probe right power on and so let's check out the funk the uh, audio input first What have I done here? Oh, the timing's wrong. Nanoseconds, it's not going to work for 1.5 kilohertz. So there we go. 1.5 kilohertz audio. And then this should be the output. You see, that's quite a bit higher frequency. So, if we uh, zoom in there, now interestingly, the scope thinks that's 6.7 megahertz, which I'm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, that's, the, that's on the base of the final PA. Nothing on it. Oh, crikey. I bet I've killed that again. First error. Didn't put a dummy load on it. There's the dummy load. I don't believe that. I might well have just fried that. Um, I might have just fried. So that's the in. That's the oscillator input from. That's from the SI. That's the signal from the SI five three five one. Here. Hmm. I'm at a loss here. Why is this happening? no output from a final PA. I've not just killed that one as well, have I? Ah, got a short circuit perhaps. Yes. Yes, there's a short circuit. Uh, not a short, there's an open circuit. There we go. But again, 6.8 megahertz, it should be over 7. So yeah, something to debug there. Ah, yeah, I can see the solder joints broken on the collector. So let's have a go at fixing this which is I'm gonna to have to go in left-handed mm. <laughs> oh dear 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 I'm not very good left-handed that looks like it's worked Signal back in. Probe connected. And 
probe. Yeah, there we go. So apparently the output is um, double sideband. Um, the AM modulator is removed, or the carrier is removed. I don't, I don't really understand this chip quite yet. But that's uh, that's the whisper transmitter. So what, I, what I'm going to do to finish it, which I've not got the parts for yet, is use an AT Tiny 85 chip, which is the same size as this one. Um, and where is it gone now? So I'm going to get the AT Tiny in there, as well as this, and that's just going to feed this directly. Um, and then something like a Raspberry Pi or a laptop or whatever will feed the input, the audio input into this. And there's my little uh, 40 meter band whisper transmitter. Not very useful. I mean, I've got <laughs> I've got an Icom IC705 and Yesus and. I've got all sorts of radios that can do a much better job of sending out a whisper signal, but it's not the point, is it? It's it's fun, and I, I get to learn a lot. I get to learn a lot, and it's sort of like debugging circuits as well. You know, even simple things like I got a dodgy solder joint there; it'd come loose. Um, this transistor figuring out that that was broken, going through the debugging steps to figure out well, why is the circuit not working. It's stuff that you can't read in a book. You've got to do hands-on and um, so yeah if you're if you're into building stuff I started off building kits because like the idea of following a schematic and just making it seemed a bit implausible but as soon as you've built a few kits like the pixie you know that's nice and easy to put together I started off doing stuff like that and then I thought well I found some interesting schematics and uh, I just thought, well, I'll, I'll start start trying to build some. And uh, it's working out quite well. I, I enjoy it, and it's nice. It's the interesting bit is um, translating this into what you get on the board because it's the components aren't. I mean, usually they are, but they're not always laid out exactly um, as they are in the schematic. Um, so it's sort of manipulating this into this which is, is quite it's fun it's cathartic um and then after just quickly other stuff um this is one of i, I bought a big batch of these esp chips so <laughs> i use them everywhere um geiger counter a few years ago i bought this uh old russian geiger tube again on ebay and uh, a couple of weeks ago i thought you i'll, I'll I'll finish it and I'll get it working. So we've got a triple five timer um, and an inductor which uses the back EMF, it pumps the inductor basically and gets the back EMF off of the inductor through a diode into these capacitors. It makes about 500 volts, incredibly low current. Um, in fact, it's so low current that trying to measure it with the multimeter, the, the 10 mega ohm resistor in the meter drags the voltage down. So I don't think it's very dangerous, but still, I've not, I've not tried touching both ends at 500 volts just in case. Um, but yeah, and it sends out pulses. You see, but when some ionising radiation hits the tube, uh, it pulls it low, um, and then eventually, when this is finished, <laughs> um, there'll be an interrupt on the microcontroller. And it can count the radiation pulses. It's not very useful. I mean, it's not calibrated, but um, I suppose if it starts uh, if it starts giving you lots of pulses, you know uh, to go elsewhere. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little radio kit. A little bit different from going out portable. Hopefully, it was mildly interesting. And um, yeah, just warm your soldering irons up and give it a go yourself. Seven three.